Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think Brendan Burns would have delivered that one a bit better, but anyway. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, on a sad day for our nation, both a sad day and a day of celebration and first and greatness. Uh, let me acknowledge a, um, a fallen New Zealand uh, soldier overseas and, and join others in the House and the various party leaders' uh, speeches earlier. Um, it is a sad, sad moment. Mr Speaker, but also a day of celebration and firsts. It was an honour and a pleasure to hear the Australian Prime Minister for the first time, the first leader of a foreign government, even using the word foreign in Australia just doesn't seem, seem, to, seem to work, uh, actually, but anyway, the leader of the Australian government, the, um, Julia, Prime Minister Julia Gillard, speak to our House and the way she delivered the speech, the content of the speech, and actually just acknowledging the realities of the position of both our countries. Um, sure, we're small and Australia's much larger, but the opportunities that presents to both of our countries, and also acknowledging our shared past, our shared whakapapa, if you like, and many, many of those historic moments around the, our country. Mr Speaker, though, I must say to this, open the gate, mate. Open the gate, mate, Mr Speaker, was the catch cry of the Aussie Apple uh, process, uh, protests um, that began in 2005, which picked up on about 90-odd years of protests before that, simply about the, the angle was, in particular, I acknowledge my, um, Hawke's Babe in a large apple-producing area, Nelson, Otago, areas of Wairapa, etc. But bottom line, a very large industry for New Zealand employs many low-skilled people and, of course, um, some higher-skilled people along the way. Point is, New Zealand apples couldn't get into Australia. I'm not going to relitigate the various debates. Members, I think, know them very well. But I acknowledge the Apple Access Group, Aussie Apple Access Group from Hawke's Bay with their partners in Nelson, who got the momentum and the ball rolling again. I still recall jumping on the steam train down from Hawke's Bay to here to march on Parliament in early 2005, I think it was May 2005, um, good friends of people in Hawke's Bay who got the message to the government of the time to start some action, and some action did start to happen, to be fair. Attention came to the issue, just about the inherent unfairness of it. And the gate is now open, mate. And I acknowledge fully Prime Minister Gillard's comments um, in the House and elsewhere about the issue. And I'd just like to quote the headline uh, from the Australian newspaper, which is reported on the Australian Prime Minister's speech, because it, it uh, captures it all, actually. It actually says, the Australian PM, PM applauded as she declares Apple War truce in historic speech to New Zealand MPs. Now, Mr Speaker, we've got to look forward. This creates huge opportunities for the Apple industry for New Zealand, the investment protocol that Honourable Stephen Joyce was just talking about there, the opportunities of a 25 million purchaser consumer market on the doorstep of New Zealand. Another product, one of our primary products now access, can be accessible over there probably next season with a bit of luck. But the point is, it's not a fight, it's about a partnership and seizing the moment and seizing the opportunity. Parallel to the acknowledgement that the world global trade umpire, WTO, has made a rule and the Australians have accepted that and now we're both working hand in hand to seize the opportunities in the moment. Parallel we have the investment protocol. Parallel we have the work that Simon Power is continuing and as the Minister of um, Finance, the Prime Minister acknowledged earlier, it did begin much of this under the previous administration. We freely acknowledge that, although it does question now why in various other speeches from the, prime, from the minister, leader of the opposition why essentially some of it seems to be contradictory. Because some time back, essentially, he said he was going to renegotiate CER, I think. And here, here we are today celebrating a growth of CER and the test to anyone who's ever doubting the worth of this to this country and to all of Australasia. Imagine New Zealand without CER. Imagine how many jobs have we lost. Imagine where our interest rates would be. Imagine how vulnerable our finance sector would be, particularly over the recent events. Mr Speaker, actually, today is a celebration of our mateship, of our comradeship with our good friends in Australia, our colleagues, and as both uh, Prime Ministers actually alluded to, we are almost family. I look forward to our Australian friends and family enjoying New Zealand apples alongside New Zealand wine, and I look forward to welcoming them as we continue our discussions and negotiation as to be, have one, for, one open domestic airline market, if in fact we can get there. 
but the goodwill shown by both of our leaders today and across the House, um, to be fair, Mr Speaker, actually points to a very positive future, a very positive future indeed. Thank you, Mr Speaker, on a very, very great day of celebration. Thank you, Mr.